This is Coyote News. Hello, I'm Levi Goots. Tonight on Coyote Sports, the men's basketball team's coming off a big win, and we talk to head coach Smith, uh, Craig Smith. But first, the headlines with Lauren Solek. Lauren? The Iowa Hawkeyes have hired NDSU's offensive coordinator Tim Polasek and Northern Illinois wide receiver coach Kelton Copeland. Polasek spent the last three seasons at NDSU and will be the line coach for the Hawkeyes. Polasek will replace Brian Ferentz, who is now the offensive coordinator for Iowa. Copeland was USD's wide receiver coach for two seasons back in 2011 before spending the last four seasons with NIU. Copeland is taking over for Bobby Kennedy. For the fifth straight week, freshman pole vaulter Chris Nilsson has been named Summit Indoor Track and Field Athlete of the Week. Nilsson has now set a new league single season record for the weekly honor. Nilsson improved his NCAA leading height to 18 feet 8 and a quarter inches. This is the fifth straight week Nilsson has bettered his personal best. Nilsson's new height moves him to 11th in the world. Nilsson also broke the American under 20 indoor record previously held by Jacob Davis of Texas since 1997. Joining Nilsson as Athlete of the Week was teammate Emily Brigham. Brigham vaulted to an indoor personal best of 13 feet, 7 and a quarter inches. Brigham ranks first in the summit and tied for 20th in the nation this season. And those are your headlines. USD's men's basketball team defeated SDSU in a 91-89 thriller Saturday afternoon in the Sports Center. Both teams scored early and often. Senior forward Tyler Flack was named Summit League's Men's Basketball Player of the Week. Flack was also named the court, College Court Report Player of the Week. This award is given to the top player among the 24 mid-major conferences. Flack scored 23 points and had 8 rebounds against SDSU. Sophomore guard Matt Mooney made th five three-pointers on his way to scoring 25 points in the game. The win puts the Coyotes at 9-4 in Summit League play. The men play their last home game on Saturday afternoon against Oral Roberts. Tip-off is at 3:15. After the big win over SDSU, the Coyote men look to ride the momentum through the rest of the season. Coyote News' Andy Hartman is live in the muck with head coach Craig Smith to talk about what it'll take for the Coyotes to make a run at the conference title. Andy? Thanks, Levi. And thanks for joining us, Coach. You bet. Thank All right. you. So tell me, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room following Saturday's game? Well, as you can imagine, it was pretty exciting. It was electric, just like the arena was. I mean, we had over 5,200 uh, wild, crazy Coyote fans going nuts, and the spirit and atmosphere was electric, and it really makes them even more special having a brand new $66 million arena to, have, to reunite all Coyote fans together. Right. You had a pretty close loss to SDSU earlier in the season. How did it feel to be able to beat them here at home? Well, it was huge for our program. You know, you can't have a rivalry unless both teams are doing their part. And quite frankly, on the men's side, we haven't been doing our part. So it was great to kind of get a little bit of revenge after a one-point loss up at Frost Arena. Uh, we're gaining a lot of momentum down the stretch as we only have three regular season games left. So to be able to, to finish the deal uh, against our rivalry opponent was great for all fans involved. All right, and so the season's winding down. Where are you turning your focus to for the remainder of the season? Well, it's our bye week today, and, and then we have our last home game against Oral Roberts. It'll be a huge game, last home game of the regular season. Um, senior night for our one senior, Tyler Flack. And so we really just got to keep getting better. We're, we're incredibly young. We're one of the youngest teams in the country. Out of 351 Division I teams, we're like the 25th youngest team. So we can keep on scratching and clawing. We got to tighten up some things defensively and just keep on improving on the offensive end. And certainly getting Tyler Flack back after his injury has really helped that out. All right, thanks coach. Thank you. The men's basketball team has their last home game Saturday in the Sanford Couch Sports Arena. Live from the Muck, I'm Andy Hartman. Thanks, Andy. Rivalries hide during sporting events, but as Coyote News' Michaela Feldman found out, some on the women's basketball team have a different perspective on competition. We definitely had some competitive games of one-on-one -on -one that may or may not have ended in injuries or tears. They've been playing together since they were kids. These guys would say competition is always better when it's against your sister. And being teammates drives them to do even better. I mean, I certainly aspire to be like her, so I'm, that, that definitely drives me for sure. Caitlin and Kira Duffy are sisters on the USD basketball team. 
and being able to share something like basketball. You just, you learn so much about each other. And um, yeah, we're, we are very lucky to, to have this experience. Caitlin was injured at the end of last year. She says while she hasn't gotten to play with her sister this year, she's hoping for a sixth year of eligibility. I've been able to kind of watch her grow from a different perspective and sort of coach her in a way, I guess, from the sidelines. Um, and obviously, ideally, I'd love to be on the floor, but it's still been awesome to spend the time with her. Bridget and Allison Arns are another set of sisters on the basketball team. Bridget, who is a senior this year, says she's always looked up to Allison. I think, you know, like when she hurts, I hurt. And when she's succeeding, I feel like I succeed just because I see her happy and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. I just never want to let her down. Allison says having your sister with you makes all the difference. I think I always get a good feeling like if she does something well or if um, we do something together well and even outside of basketball it's always nice to have each other there. Someone to talk to, someone to rely on so it's pretty awesome. Bridget and Allison say it's going to be weird not playing together next year. This makes me really sad. <laughs> yeah it's gonna be different. I mean we've been playing together since what I was in second and you were in fourth grade. Yeah. Their younger sister, Monica Arns, who is a senior at Crofton High School in Nebraska, has committed to USD. For the Sports Report, I'm Michaela Feldman. The women's basketball team hosts Oral Roberts tonight at 7 in the arena. USD's track and field team split competition between the SDSU Classic and the Tyson Invitational in Arkansas. Joining teammates Chris Nilsson and Emily Brigham at, at top pole vaulters were senior Madison Mills, who finished in eighth, freshman Makaya Hunt in ninth, and senior Hunter Wilkes in 11th. Senior Tyler Frank placed eighth in the high jump, while Gwaine Williams was 35th in the 200 meter. At the SDSU Classic, junior thrower Jacob Barents took home the shot put title. Barents threw 56 feet 10 inches for the victory. Sophomore Brennan Schmidt improved his personal best at the 400 meter, while junior Nicole Schmidt finished runner-up in the mile run. Other top 10 finishers include Brittany Kerr, Colette Christensen, Danielle Waldner, and Mary Wester. The Coyotes head back to the Dakota Dome on Friday night for the USD last chance meet. The women's softball team opened their season with five games in California over the weekend. The Coyotes split two games against Long Beach State losing 8-0 and then winning 1-0. USD lost to San Diego State 7-1 and to number 8 UCLA 6-0. Jamie Holscher scored the Coyotes' only run in their game against San Diego State. Freshman pitcher Ali Wiegand started both games, which included a complete game effort against the Bruins. The Coyotes took on Notre Dame in their final game, losing by a close score of 2-1. USD heads to Arizona for the Littlewood Classic this weekend. 